Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres, and if you'd like to apply to be a guest on the show, just head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, so I have Trisha Turner on the line, and she is CEO of Trisha Turner Property Group, and she's also host of Anything But Average, Achieving Success in Life. And there's so many ands here, Trisha. I love your <laughs> intro. And she's also an upcoming author in one of our Mission Matters Business Leaders book that'll be coming out uh, early next year. So really excited to have you on the line, Trisha. I mean, I, I want to I throw in some more ands, but for now, I'll just welcome you to the show. Thank you for having me so much. I'm excited. Oh, man. So lots going on here to talk about today and lots to discuss. So, of course, we'll talk about what you're doing in real estate and the overall topic of what it looks like to build a successful um, real estate business. And then, of course, we'll get into your writing for um, our upcoming Mission Matters book and uh, and, and the real estate content that you'll be uh, contributing there. And then I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, so I I don't want to get this wrong, for your show, um, you've been doing this now going on or is it over two years? Tell me a little bit more about that. We might even be slightly over. Come on. I love yeah, it. I, I, you know what? I think January is the two-year marker. Yeah, uh, it is. Con- come on. Congratulations. I think that's an amazing accomplishment. And I always tell people, and I, I might sound biased because I'm a media guy, but I'm like, like the value that people um, make and, and the effort it takes to launch a show, to do the streaming, the podcast, the YouTube, whatever your, really whatever your platform is and the heart that goes behind it. Um, I mean, I definitely want my audience to go check out your show and we'll get more of the contact information as, as this goes on and we'll put everything in the show notes. But um, just to get us kicked off, we'll start this interview, Trisha, like we start them all uh, with our Mission Matters Minute. So, Trisha, we at Mission Matters, we amplify stories for entrepreneurs, executives, and experts. That's our mission. Trisha, what mission matters to you? Here's what matters to me, you guys. I've been in real estate for a very long time, and the real estate industry is super hard. It's especially hard if you want to build an empire and be successful. And so what matters to me is we have a little slogan we call building better lives by building better agents. So we literally are out trying to scoop up as many agents as we can, bring them under our roof, our umbrella, our organization so that they can have a life of abundance. Amazing. Uh, Love bringing mission-based entrepreneurs and executives on the line and really just to share why they do what they do, what gets them fired up, what gets them motivated about their industry, and ultimately, how are they adding value to uh, to, you know, the the marketplace and just society in general. So awesome to have you on the show. And um, I guess just starting from the beginning, like how did you get started in real estate? Like how'd you get on this path? So mine goes back a long ways. You know, I wasn't always set out to go to college. I tried it for a little bit, but really wasn't my thing. So I got right into apartment management, leasing agent, nice. straight into apartment management. Then my dad was like, I think this real estate thing is something that you should look into. You probably should get your real estate license. And so I did. Got my real estate license, was doing real estate Mm -hmm. sales for a very long time. And then I thought, you know what? There's got to be more. I got married. My Mm -hmm. then husband was a real estate agent as well. So I got my loan officer's license Mm -hmm. and I did lending for six years. However, in 2008, I went through a divorce and the mortgage industry crashed. And so that was a super dark time, 2008, Mm -hmm. 9, and 10, Mm because, of course, the banks weren't loaning any money and it was hard for anything to get done. And I had just went through a divorce and I had three small children. One of those is special needs. So for me and my life, it was um, a super uh, serious time, I should say. At the end of 2010, I determined I no longer wanted to be in the lending business. It wasn't fun anymore. So I activated my real estate license again and went back into real estate sales full time and have just been grinding ever since. And then I got my broker's license uh, in 2017. What an amazing story. And, you know, speaking to those that are considering a, a, um, a, a career in real estate, maybe some of the, the, the younger people are not even just age wise. I just mean like maybe they're considering real estate for the first time, um, taking yourself back into your shoes when, you know, you first got started. Like what kind of things would you tell to the newbies that are considering it as a career? Well, here's what I know. So in 2008, 9 and 10, when I went through the darkness in my life that I went through, yeah. 
when I reactivated my real estate license, I was by myself. Basically, I didn't have a team and I'm in the Houston market. So things are very competitive here. I did not have help. I did not have guidance. And so for that first year, it was just a matter of me doing things by myself, trial and error, working every single day because I've got three kids and I've got to take care of my kids. And yeah. nobody ever really reached out to help me. And I thought, you know, there's a problem here. And I had worked for every big box company out there and and none of them really were out there to help me. And so I opened my own brokerage in 2017 because of that, because of that passion to help people that need help. And so for those people that are just getting into real estate, you've got to pay attention to who you're paying attention to. And you've got to align yourself with people that are really out there trying to help you and make a difference. Interview multiple people and don't try to do it by yourself. Join a team and be part of something that's going to be big. For sure. Mm. Pay attention to who you're paying attention to. I've never heard that one, but I'm in. Mine. <laughs> it's true. Think about that. Think how many people call themselves a life coach or a real estate coach. And it's like, yeah. what have you done to justify that title? Because for me, we are a high producing office here. It's like, you really have to have done something big to impress me because I have a huge vision. But don't go out there trying to, to entice others and how to live this successful life or be this success story when you've not done it yourself. And yeah. unfortunately, a lot of people get caught up in that. And it's, it's sad. And in, in our industry, especially in real estate, you know, everybody and their mother is a real estate agent. And when you look at the numbers on a national level, this is facts, mm -hmm. you guys, on a national level, 43% of real estate agents haven't sold one home since COVID. So when wow. you think about that, you're like, okay, I need to pay attention to who I'm paying attention to. Yeah. Align yourself with people that are doing something. So I don't want to oversimplify this, but I know you've been in the business a long time and you see and you, you know, you work with many different people at your brokerage. And we'll talk more about that from, you know, um, some of the more seasoned individuals to mid-level career. I mean, a lot of different people that you're helping are real estate agents in your in your brokerage. But um, where do you find, uh, especially when people are, you know, kind of maybe they got a little bit of traction going, they're just getting started, but maybe they got some things going and like, where do you find they go wrong? Like, what do you think kind of kills a lot of real estate careers out there? Yeah, ego, ego wow. and pride. I watch it every single day. And, you know, mm -hmm. when I opened my own office, that was in 2017. However, mm -hmm. three years, not even three years later, it, actually mm -hmm. a year and a half later, I left my own company and opened an EXP branch office and took 20 mm -hmm. agents and built a team within EXP because I'm like, you know what? There's something to this movement. I'm looking at all these biggest producers in the real estate industry coming together under one umbrella to make a difference. I see the numbers. I see the future. I'm no dummy. I don't want to have a blockbuster. I want to be part of something big. And yeah. so when you look at other people that have independent brokerages and not all of them, but oftentimes their ego and their pride is in the way. Mm -hmm. And when you get your broker's license, or at least for me anyway, part of getting that was I want to be able to help the agent. So if my goal, one of my goals is really to be the best solution for that agent, mm -hmm. for them to live a life of abundance, then shame on me if I'm not then trying to achieve that for yeah. them. So I think that's the biggest misconception and the biggest thing that other brokers do wrong is mm -hmm. they want their name on everything and they want their pride mm -hmm. and their ego in front of everything. And it's like, hey, take a step back <laughs> and let's see what the agents need. What is best for them and their future? Period. Yeah. No, it makes total sense. It's okay. So this is one of the things that maybe holds people back. You said the ego part of things. So I'm yep. um, taking it a step further. So let's say that, you know, a particular agent is thinking about, okay, well, you know, I can put my, my ego on the shelf and I want, I want to do something big and I want to work with a team. What are some things that they should consider when making that choice? You mentioned earlier, you know, talk to multiple people, like, like, what are some things they should be asking? What kind of questions? So I'm a big believer. Now, EXP is a virtual company, but I am a big believer in face to face. So we have a brick and mortar. I believe in synergy. I believe in being accountable. I believe in being responsible and self-disciplined. So yeah. in our organization, everything is methodical. I mean, you know what you're doing on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. And we start every week, Monday mornings with a sales meeting and it's nine to 12 and it's mandatory. If you're going to be part of our group, you need to be here. We're going to yeah. go over the market report. We're going to go over big wins. We're going to go over commitments. And then every morning we start a daily huddle, 830 in the morning. It's on yeah. Zoom and it's dressed, ready for work, video on because we want you up. We want you to be productive. It's not for everybody. Sure. But 
we know what we're doing every day at 830. And then at one o'clock every afternoon, we're on the Zoom as well to answer contract questions, marketing questions. What do you need help with? Where's your struggle? So every day we have a system built out, what you're doing all day long. And then we have training. I've spent years collaborating with some of the top coaches and leaders across the nation. Yeah taking what they're doing, taking what we're doing. And so my ops guy and, and I have sat down and put together this amazing training. So it's almost like plug and play. We sit wow. down. If you're a good fit for our organization, boom, this is what you do. You got a three day launch. You're going into a 30 day kickstart. We expect you to be producing. And our agents are producing pretty much on week two. They're already out showing property and they're writing wow. contracts and it works. It's a system and we follow it. And you know what? We have turnover. Yes, because people don't want to be held accountable. But at yeah. the end of the day, we want you to do more, sometimes more than you want to do for yourself. But mm -hmm. when you have a big vision like we do, when we're all put together, we'll achieve it much better. Hmm. Let's go. Uh, let's go a layer deeper. So okay. we've talked a, a little bit, but I want to go further. So tell us a little bit more about, about your company overall. Okay. So EXP, as you know, is a global company, fastest mm -hmm. growing real estate company in history. And then my company within EXP is the mm -hmm. Trisha Turner Property Group. We're a local company here in Houston. Um, when I had just the independent brokerage open, we grew to 50 agents super quick. Wow. Right now we've got about 22 once we moved into the team model. And then yeah. we're adding constantly because we do believe we are the best fit here. We have a big vision of the numbers that we hit. Our goal next year is a hundred million in yeah. sales volume. And we will hit it. We want to be over a thousand transactions per year, not because it's a, a number thing. However, it is. But it's we do yeah. believe for buyers and sellers were their best opportunity to get the, the best deal 1000 percent. And mm. so we focus on that. And when you look at disruption, I'm a big innovator. I'm always looking ahead. You look at what's disruptive. Well, when you look at like big teams that are doing big things yeah. versus a single agent, that divide is huge. I mean, you're either doing a lot or you're not. And you're going to see watch it on a national level. The big teams are what is what's taking over and the yeah. consumers then expect expect that. They expect you to have all this marketing. They expect you to have a whole army of people helping them mm -hmm. sell their house and they deserve it. And so we are here focused on that locally and here to help the agents. We have everything under the sun for the agents. We have a full staff for them. They do nothing but literally go on appointments, mm -hmm. negotiate contracts and go talk to people, make relationships, period. Oh man, that's awesome. And what yeah, I think about awesome. that when I was first doing it, I was you just going to say, these kids nowadays, these agents nowadays, you're spoiling them, Trisha. Come on. Totally. But you know, it is honestly like the average agent sells four to six homes a year. We don't want yeah. anybody doing that. You can't survive on that. The average yeah. agent makes less than $40,000 a year. Again, yeah. you can't survive on that. We want people yeah. making six figures. We want everybody to live in abundance. And you can, yeah. when you do it by a system and you do the right things, we have everything, right things, right things, yeah. right things to do, say, you name it, we got it. And I think when you're looking at like future longevity wise, if yeah. you, this is really your career, if you get a good foundation built and get yourself aligned mm -hmm. with the right people, you'll be super successful. So going a step further in terms of systems and the importance of systems. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, many business owners watching this and, and they understand that the, you know, they can only scale, they can only get as big as their systems can, can withstand. Right. So the same thing is true for, for real estate. So when you think about like the advantage of working, you know, with something like a, um, an EXP realty and then working also with your, with your group, um, talk about the importance of systems for those that are watching. Systems are what makes us churn. Systems are what makes us run. And when you look at like roles, so I'm a visionary. I don't like systems. I don't like spreadsheets. I don't like anything, checklists, none of that stuff. I'm the one that's like, I see this big vision and I'm going to make this happen and we need to do these things. But then to yeah. actually build that out is a super hard thing to do. And yeah. so you have to have an integrator. You have to have an operations person that, mm -hmm. that hears what you want to do and then makes it happen. And so when you put those two things together, that's like fire. And so we have that here. And so my operations guy has built out these systems where you literally every lead that's coming in, you know what to do with it. You know when you need to contact them. We have follow ups in place. Yeah. We have what to say. We have texting. We have everything for you to do, because in the real estate world, especially mm -hmm. as it keeps being disrupted, you can't just do it on a spreadsheet. You can't just do it without a CRM. You can't yeah. just get up throughout each day and not have a clue what you're doing here in our office. We live by Google. Everybody lives on their Google calendar. You know what you're doing at every hour of every day. We live in yeah. Google Docs, Google Forms, Google, all of that, because you have to. It's mm -hmm. systems, period.
No, I love it. And uh, and I know I've been on an EXP's uh, virtual world, their virtual platform. Oh, yeah. It's called Verbella, I think it's it called. Is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man, it's awesome. Like just the overall infrastructure and the support and all the things they've done. I mean, I have my little avatar. I walk around oh, I yeah. orange or something random. I'm like, I don't want another red tie on Verbella. Come on. I get to be cool in the virtual world. Yeah. Uh, but you go change your clothes, your hair color, you put a hat on glasses, whatever you want. It's insane. <laughs> Yeah. And for those watching it, think of it as this like this virtual world where um, where EXP and, you know, all of the, the people that are part of that platform get to go and they get to learn. They get to do trainings. They get to like, for example, one of the keynotes that I gave there had to do specifically with um, had to do specifically with branding and marketing, things like that. So it was just a lot of lot of fun. Um, but I, I, I just think it's a great idea. And I think that the, um, the, that the route that you went, um, kind of linking up with EXP and all of that, it's just a, it just seems like it's a win and a good fit. Um, well, so think of it me- like this, like nobody knew what Amazon was when they first started, it was an online bookstore. It's like, what is that? And what's that going to be mm-hmm. same thing. And so with EXP, we kind of got in, I'm in this super tight group. There was about 60 of us in the very beginning. And so we are like laser focused on changing wow. the world and, and building this huge empire. And when you put that many people together, now it's grown to almost 10,000. Our group has, but when you put that many people together with the same same drive, same ambition, just a bunch of builders, yeah. heaven help you. You can't stop it. And it's like the energy is insane. You know, they tell you that 5% of the world are leaders and 95% are followers. And yeah. I tell everybody, I'm like the people within EXP, they're the five percenters all day long. Wow. Amazing. It's awesome. <laughs> Absolutely. It's amazing. Um, yeah. So shifting focus slightly, um, I want to talk about the writing and in, in the upcoming book. So yep. Um, mission matters. I know you'll be writing our, in our upcoming, um, real estate book. So tell us a little bit more and I'm not holding you to this. We're not, it's not published yet, so you can change a little bit, but what are some of the things that, that you want your, your readers to, to get out of your writing? Honestly, um, and I speak a lot about this. I'm a, yeah. I get up at 345 in the morning. People think that I, that is insane, but I've wow. done this for years and I don't go to bed early either. I go to bed somewhere between 11 and 12. I've never been a big sleeper. And this is just how I live my life. And again, this kind of goes back to 2010 when I went through that really dark divorce and mortgage crash and just Mm. broke with three kids and needing to feed my kids. I literally lived on a credit card for almost that whole year while I was trying to figure out life and trying to get sales back going again. Mm -hmm. And I had a lot of um, anger towards my ex-husband. I didn't want to go through a divorce. And so at that point, I wasn't a big reader. I didn't really have a big morning routine. I've always worked out, but I didn't really have a a regimen. And I became an avid reader. I decided I needed to learn how to forgive my ex-husband so I could at Mm -hmm. least focus on the future. And so I read my like first book in its entirety at the end Mm -hmm. of 2010, and it was on forgiveness. And then I just started getting up every day with the morning routine. And so I would read something with self-help. I would read scripture from the Bible. I would work yeah. out and I would get my mind focused every day. And so I literally spend like from 345 in the morning until about 6 a.m. by myself working out, feeding my mind, body and soul. And I believe once you do that and you actually mm-hmm. focus your mind and you do it every single day, you don't pick up your phone. You don't get on social media. You, yeah. God forbid you check your email. You don't do that. It's like you got to put on a suit of armor every single day before you mm-hmm. ever face the day. And so we're going to talk a lot about that. And, and because it's mindset, because anybody can do anything if they put their mind to it and they put the right things in their mind and their body. And so for me, I know I'm writing a book actually and secondary to what you guys are doing. And so it'll yeah. come out maybe next year, but it's called Yes, You Can, because I was a single mom with three kids mm-hmm. with no help from my ex-husband financially or anything whatsoever. Mm-hmm. I've grown an amazing business. My kids are all involved in the real estate business now. They've never wanted for anything. I've lived wow. a very good life and I continue to build. And I believe if I can do it, anybody can do it, yeah. but it hasn't been easy at all. It's mm-hmm. every single day being very disciplined, being very focused. This is intentional. This is what I'm doing today. And this is what I must accomplish today. And this is what I must accomplish this year, period. Oh man, what an amazing story. I I love it. I mean, not just interviewing you, but, um, but that we're going to put this in print as well. And then you have other channels and other platforms that people can follow and learn more too. So, so your show, so anything but average achieving success in life. Um, First off, great title, of course, who doesn't want that, (laughs) but uh, tell us the concept, like, like build it out for us. Tell us a little bit more about the show and, uh, and what you do. 
So when I opened my own brokerage five years ago, it's like I wanted to share agent stories. And so I started interviewing the agents here and it was feature agent Friday. And so I really enjoyed doing that, yeah. like hearing their stories. I believe everybody has a success story and I'm a big motivator. I believe in, in bringing positivity into the world. I'm told I live in la la land and not in reality. It's like, I like it where I live. I think it's a <laughs> happy place to be. And so about two years ago, um, Michael yeah. Reese, who's a dear friend of mine and coach of mine, he was like, you have to have a podcast. You have to get this doing yeah. going. You got to get it going. And so I did it. It was January right before COVID hit. And so launched it in January. It's Tuesdays, every Tuesday, at 12 o'clock mm. central. It's on Facebook Live. Of course, it's on also YouTube, LinkedIn. Yeah. It goes on Instagram. However, every week it is Tuesdays at 12. Mm -hmm. When COVID hit and the world became so dark and so grim, I committed mm. that entire month of April. So I guess that would have been 2019 or whatever, yeah. whatever. 2020, whenever it was, I committed that whole month of April to doing one every single morning, starting at 9 a.m. Wow. So we interviewed somebody every morning for 30 days at 9 a.m. just to bring positivity into the world. Yeah. So I was like, we have too much negativity. And that like launched it like crazy. And so literally, mm -hmm. I only did the 30 days daily because it's a lot. You do it. And you oh, yeah. It a lot. But I have religiously been on Tuesdays, 12 o'clock central. And it's to share people's stories because maybe you're not a millionaire. Maybe you are. Maybe you have, have struggled as a single mom and you have a success story. Yeah. Everybody has a level of a success. And it's not just in real mm -hmm. estate. It's in any industry. But it's a way for me to, to bring positivity to the world because I, I think we all need it. Man, what an amazing story. And uh, <laughs> what's one of your, uh, and I, I ask all my podcasters and all my show hosts this, so just throwing this out there and you okay. don't have to use their name, but like, like what's one of the, what's one of the memorable episodes just to give the, just to give the, my audience a little bit of the flavor of, of the type of content and what to expect. Like what's a story from maybe a memorable episode you recall? There's actually several of them, and but the most impactful ones. I I'm not going to ask you to choose between all your kids, right? What's your favorite kid? No, I'm just. Right. Those are always hard What's to your do. favorite episode? No, the number one. No, no, just one of them. There's so <laughs> many of them, but honestly, when you hear people's success stories, like when when you see people and they're ultra successful, say because the people that I'm thinking of that have come to my mind, they're super successful. Yeah. So you just assume maybe they were brought up that way. Maybe they were brought up in a good home. But then when you hear horror stories that hmm. they were abused in their entire wow. childhood life and their dad left and the mom was there, but she was abusive and there was drugs and stuff involved. And wow. they literally been on their own since they were 13 or 14. And then also hmm. went through a drug abuse problem. And then you look and they maybe are in their forties and they're living the life of their dreams. Mm -hmm. That, is just amazing because we on the outside have no idea the battles people are going through in their mind and in their life and in their home. You know, I was in a lady's house just the other day from the outside, her house looked perfect. Like it should be fine. I opened that door and it was like, Oh my gosh, like a bomb had went off in there and oh, she's wow. in there in distress. The house is, in a horrible condition. And, mm -hmm. and it was a sad situation. She was calling me for help, but it was like from the outside as an inside, an outsider looking in, you had no idea what was going on inside there. And mm -hmm. so it's those kind of stories that you get exposed to that you're, you're like, wow, you came from something so horrible mm -hmm. and so dark, but you've made such a beautiful life. And those people, I believe, are the ones that are the most passionate about making a difference because it's mm -hmm. not about the money. It's that they don't want anyone to go through what they went through. And that, I think, is what changes the world. That's a great example and uh, definitely want my audience to go check that out. So um, what are some of the, what are some of the platforms? So tell us a little bit more about the platforms, how people yep. find the content. Okay. So we're on, of course, Facebook every uh, Tuesday at 12 o'clock central. It's a Facebook live. It's on my page, which is Trisha Turner. You can also yeah. find us at Trisha Turner property group. And then we also have another page, anything but average. So it runs on all three of those pages live, as well as YouTube. We have Trisha Turner properties on YouTube and on LinkedIn as well. And then of course, Instagram is Trisha Turner property group. So we're all over the place. Google it. You'll see us everywhere. Love it. Um, so uh, if somebody's watching this and they want, so they're an agent or let's just uh, take it actually from the other side of the um, of view just to start with. So they're maybe interested in the Houston market. You mentioned working in Houston multiple times. So um, like what kind of properties do you work with investors? Do you work with homeowners? Do you do any commercial? Like give us a feel for what types of, of things that you work with um, in the Houston area. 
Gotcha. So I run a large team here. Again, we've got about 20 active agents. We yeah. handle a high volume. We'll do over um, 300 homes next year. And yeah. so we run anywhere. We've got some agents that do 200, $300,000 homes. We, of course, yeah. have the upper end. We're in the millions. And in the Houston market, we still have such a low inventory. However, yeah. what's fascinating is that inside the Houston, like city of Houston, Galleria area, inner loop area, which used yeah. to be super, super hot before COVID is kind of not. That's where we have the bulk of our inventory. However, if you go to the suburbs, everything outside of that, and you want to find a, an amazing home, you're going to be putting in multiple offers. And so mm -hmm. all of the economists are projecting 2022 is going to be the same thing. So if you're a buyer out there and you're thinking, yeah. I'm going to wait till the market cools off, you're going to be waiting quite a while because what you're yeah. going to see happen is interest rates will climb next year, which of course is going to shrink mm -hmm. what you can afford. So best time to buy and sell period is right now in any market. Fantastic. So Trisha, if um, if somebody's watching this and they want to learn more, um, maybe they're, they're a real estate agent. Do they have to be, by the way, um, in the Houston area or you work with agents um, outside of that market? Like give us a feel for what types of agents you're looking for um, and to, to see if, you know, they're a good fit, like yeah. that type of thing. So we actually work with a lot of brand new agents, not yeah. just right here in our market, because again, I've partnered with like 60 other brokers and team leaders all around mm. the nation to create all this training that we have here yeah. locally. We're bringing in a bunch of new agents because we know we are the best solution for them, but we're yeah. looking for hungry people where we want coachable people, hungry, humble. Mm -hmm. We want people that want to do more, be more and be part of something that's going to change the world. Mm. We want people that want to make a difference, period. So I have to ask, I know you got a lot going on. So growing the brokerage, um, working with EXP, lots going on, creating great training. Um, you have a book coming out with us. You have your show. I mean, what's next? I mean, what's next for you? What's next for the business? Expansion. We're totally looking to expand. We're looking to buy a building next year because the building that we're in is only about 3,000 square feet. We need one more centrally located in the Houston area, much bigger, because we believe, again, that that if you build it, they will come. And so we want it to be a hub. We want it to be a hub for agents to come, hang out, grow their business, collaborate, have synergy, do events. Mm -hmm. We're doing lots of events next year. We'll launch an event January 13th, and then we're pretty much doing one. We're going to travel all over the state of Texas, doing mm -hmm. one every six weeks. And it's, again, helping people grow their mindset and grow their real estate business, period. What an amazing story and uh, excited to bring this to my audience, excited to publish you. Um, that being said, so if somebody is watching this and they want to connect with you and your team, um, yeah. what's the best way for them to do that? Yeah. Simple, Trisha Turner dot work. You got to spell it right, though. T-R-I-C-I-A Turner dot work. You'll find a link there to grab an appointment with me, get a home evaluation, whatever. Schedule a call. Everything is right there in one platform. Ah, nice and simple the way I like it there. And one more time, because I do want my audience to go check that out. The name of your show and where people can listen to it. Anything but average achieving success in life. You can find it mostly all over Facebook, but of course on YouTube under Trisha Turner Properties and uh, on LinkedIn, of course. Perfect. Um, and we'll put all that in the show notes so that everybody can just go in there, just click on it real nice and simple and easy to go check out the show, to go also check out Trisha's website and otherwise. So great stuff there. Um, first off, Trisha, just want to say really it has been a pleasure having you on the show, learning more about your background, all the great work that you're doing and, and your positivity and your energy for what you do. I mean, just comes right through the platform and uh, I can feel it. I'm sure my audience can as well. Um, everybody de definitely go check out that show. Um, and everybody that's, that's tuning in, um, if this is your first time with us, Mission Matters is a platform really dedicated to helping uh, entrepreneurs and executives um, share why they do what they do, like what wakes them up in the morning, what gets them fired up, um, what gets them out there to add value into the marketplace, society, into the world. So if you're into content like that, we definitely want you to hit that subscribe button, have many more mission-based uh, entrepreneurs and executives coming on the line, and we don't want you to miss a thing. And Trisha, really, it has been a pleasure. Um, thanks again for for coming on the show and yeah. I look forward to continue to watching your to watching your journey and uh, to publishing you and just to have you part of the Mission Matters community so thank you I love it thanks bye you guys